Hi, Andrew Cuneo here with a new YouTube video. It's day one of Alchemy on Arena. So I'm going to be showing you a deck, trying out some of the new Alchemy only cards and also showing one of the nerfed cards. So let's jump into the deck. I've named my deck Gut Check because I based it around this card, Gut Mourn, Pact Bound Servant. So this is one of the new arena only cards. Three mana for a one three flying death touch. So that's not great, but what does it give you? It gives you, when it enters the battlefield, each player discards a non-land card. So that's an arena only mechanic. You couldn't do that in real life because it's relying on arena to verify that your opponent doesn't have any, that your opponent only has lands if they don't discard a non-land card when their hand isn't empty. So arena is making sure that it's a non-land card that they're discarding. And then it says, whenever a player discards a card during your turn, they choose another player. That player conjures a duplicate of that card into their hand. It perpetually gains. You can cast it with any color of mana. So what it basically means is when this comes out, if both people have non-land cards in their hand, you're going to swap the worst card in your hand for the worst card in your opponent's hand, where each player is making their own decision about what the worst card is. But if you don't have any non-land cards in your hand, you're just going to get a non-land card from your opponent. And also, once this is in play, this is an ability that's going to happen whenever any card is discarded on your turn. So that kind of drives the deck building here where you want to be able to empty your hand and you want to have a lot of discard, I think, to make to maximize this gut mourn card. So that's going to drive the rest of my deck building decisions. So let's go over kind of the rest of the cards. I've got Snow-Covered Swamps and Faceless Haven. This is Alchemy, so Faceless Haven's been nerfed down to only being a 3-3 instead of a 4-3, but it's still plenty good. Uh, I've got some Sorens, which is just generally a value card. But then four Go Blanks, so more discard to go with Gutmorn. And also Go Blank has just proven to be a very good card in Standard. Acquisitions Expert, which kind of functions like a Ravenous Rat. It's basically just, you know, you get a cheap creature, you make them discard. Deadly Dispute, because this deck has a lot of really low-impact cheap creatures, so it's a way to sack them if they're not doing anything for you at the time. Some Infernal Grasps, I think it's the best black removal spell. I'm trying one copy of this new arena-only card called Sap Vitality, so it's black-black. For an instant, deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then you choose a creature in your hand, and it gets plus three plus O. Oh. So that's another way to make some of these relatively low impact cards that this deck is playing into better creatures. Now, if you make the acquisitions expert into a 4-2, that's a real big deal. So if this is killing an actual card from your opponent and buffing a creature that you then play, that is a really huge swing from one card. Uh, the disadvantage with a lot of these arena only cards is they're really reliant on you having the right kind of card in your hand at the time you want to cast them to get the payoff. So this one, the payoff is very high. I think if you look at a lot of the other cards in the arena alchemy expansion, the payoff just isn't worth the, the inconsistency of the fact that you don't get the payoff if you don't have the card in your hand when you cast it. But I'm going to try this one. Uh, I've got one in the main deck. I've got some more in the sideboard. Then I've got just some general cheap creatures. Because again, I really want to dump my hand. I want to have no non-land cards in my hand when I play Gutmorn, if possible. So I've got Concealing Curtains, which is a very cheap card. Also a pretty impactful card. And it's a discard card. So here, you know, when you uh, transform Concealing Curtains into the revealing eye and make your opponent discard their best card. If you have Gutmorn in play, you're not just making them discard it, you're you're stealing it from them. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, this is another one of the new arena only cards, Cursebound Witch, it's a one, two. You draft a card from the spell book. So what that means is, Arena's gonna show you three random cards from this 15 cards spell book that the Cursebound Witch has. And you're gonna pick whichever one you would like to have the most at that moment. So if we scroll through the spell book here, we've got Witch's Cauldron, Witch's Vengeance, Witch's Oven. It's all witch-themed cards. Witch's Cottage, Witch's Familiar, Curse of Leeches, which isn't exactly a witch-themed card, but it is a curse, I guess. Cauldron Familiar. So if you notice, 
We've had Witches Oven and Cauldron Familiar. So you can get Cat Oven in this format, even though those cards are no longer in standard. I've actually already done that once. I've had Cat Oven in a game of Alchemy with only standard legal sets. Black Cat, which is a pretty bad card. Sorcerer's Broom, which is, again, a pretty bad one. I guess you could sack creatures with Deadly Dispute in this deck, but I don't think you'd ever want to choose that. Okay. Bloodhunter Bat, really overcosted creature. Unwilling Ingredient, kind of like a replacement for your fodder creature, the Cursebound Witch that you sacked. Expanded Anatomy. It's pretty weird. So this card is a really, really similar to Eye Twitch, I would say, in that it's a small body that when it dies, is going to give you something that's kind of overcosted. So Eye Twitch, you can get Expanded an Anatomy from your sideboard. Here, you're just getting it from the spell book, so you're not using sideboard space. It's kind of funny that there's just an overlap of the one card. Cruel Reality, which is really, really out of place with these other cards, but is a really powerful card, actually. So that'd be a nice one to be able to get, assuming you have seven mana to cast it. Torn of Scarabs is a pretty weak card, to be honest, that people kind of... It caused a lot of people to panic when they used to play Limited in the Amonkhet block when this set was legal. So not really actually a very good card. And then Trespasser's Curse, another pretty mediocre card. So this is like most of the Spellbook cards in this set where the thing you're getting from the Spellbook is mostly pretty bad. There's only a handful of the Spellbook cards that actually give you really good spells. And the trade-off there is that the initial thing is pretty bad. So you can get something like this, which this is underpowered. If You would never just play black for a 1-2, but black for a 1-2 that's going to give you another card when it dies, that's like in the realm of something you might play. So the additional card you're getting is mostly going to be pretty bad. Uh, then I've got four Dread Fugues, which I think is the best generic discard spell you can play in your deck. Again, I want to play a lot of discard because of Gutmorn. Some Shambling Ghasts, only three copies to go with the Deadly Disputes. That's kind of a, that's a combo a lot of black decks play in standard, basically. And then two copies of Warlock Class, which is a little bit unusual, but what this does is it's a cheap card you can get out of your hand and you can kind of store a draw on the board before the Gutmorn resolves. So, you know, this, you get this into play, you don't put it to level two because you know you're going to play Gutmorn eventually. So then after you play Gutmorn, you get it to level two and you hopefully find a card that does something good. Um, and also, this is honestly just a, a reasonably efficient card. Like the level, when you're level one, you're not really getting much out of it. But by the time you get to level two, you've gotten your card back, a little bit of selection, and then... If you get it to level three, that's a pretty powerful ability. So then going over the sideboard, it's kind of a lot of the usual suspects for a black deck. We've got more removal in the form of Blood Chief's Thirst, Infernal Grasp, Crippling Fear, Sap Vitality, Meat Hook Massacre. So when you sideboard, you're going to want to select whatever removal spell is most effective against your opponent's deck. If, you don't, if they don't have any creatures, you're not going to have any removal. If they have a ton of creatures, you're going to have a lot of these. Uh, then some cards for decks that are more controlling. We've got Duresses and Skyclave Shades. Honestly, the sideboard is pretty rough on this deck. This is a, a day one version of a deck, so I'm really mostly just interested in exploring how good is Gutmorn, actually. The little bit I've played with it, I think it's actually one of the better cards in Alchemy, and I think it might be a good enough card to just show up in top-tier decks. So that's what I'm going to try to find out in some games. Only one land, and I don't have a Deadly Dispute. So I think this one I can pretty safely mulligan. All right, I like this hand. I think I'm going to... I don't know anything about my opponent's deck. I think I'll actually just pitch the Shambling Ghast, and I'm just going to hope the Dread Fugues are good. Try to empty my opponent's hand and then play Gutmorn. this whiffs here, it's going to be pretty sad. Dread Fugue is a pretty hit or miss card. I'll take the Reckless Impulse. Thank you. 
Definitely, given that I'm playing a discard card, cards that can give my opponent a two for one are like the cards I most want to get out of their hand. They decide to respond to me dread fuging them with an electrostatic bolt. Which I was going to take the electrostatic bolt, so that kind of makes sense, but they also just chose to shock me, which it's not a particularly effective play. They are going to get their card back eventually from casting an instant, although they need to have an instant for that to happen. And it's not clear I'm going to let them have an instant. So here, it's, sequencing is very important with Gutmorn. I'm going to get my last non-land card out of my hand. Then I'm going to play Gutmorn. So now I don't have to discard from the Gutmorn. They're going to have to discard something. Which it may just wind up being the Tibble. This is the new Tibble. I don't think this card is very good. But... It's certainly a good card if you wind up with it for free, which Gutmorn is effectively going to be stealing it from them here. Oh, I stole an unexpected windfall instead. Hmm. I guess I'm just going to curtains their Tybalt out of their hand. I definitely want to take the Tybalt out of their hand. And then, should I attack? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll attack. If they have a land, they're going to be able to crack back with the Den of the Bugbear, and they wind up up a token. But if they don't have a land, it's pretty good for me. This new card, Conductive Current, that they played, I think is one of the stronger cards in the Alchemy set. I've tried it some. It basically requires you to play almost a mono-red deck. But it's one of the best red sweepers, if you can do that. Uh, should I go blank them, or should I just Unexpected Windfall away the go blank? I think I'm just going to Unexpected Windfall away the go blank. And it works out for me because, oh, so here is a little bit awkward thing about Gutmorn. Where I'd be giving them a deadly dispute. I think I'm going to pass. I'll deadly dispute away the revealing eye if they don't do anything to kill it. All right, this is another new card. Cool. So this one, like... I don't think this card is particularly good. They got to loot away a mountain and they have a 2-2 prowess. There's this deck building requirement that oh, that huge block of text basically just says you can only put it in decks with lots of instants and sorceries. I should be able to empty my hand before playing the gut morn. I guess. I'm going to start with Dreadfuge, and honestly, I'm going to hope it whiffs. Because if they have an expensive card in their hand, I'll get to steal the expensive card. They just have a Spike Field Hazard. So again, I want to play the Warlock class first. Then I'm going to play the Gutmorn. Sadly, they don't have any cards left. Now I can dig for... Hopefully, I, it'd be really nice to find a Soren. Do I want a Curse Bound Witch or do I want a Concealing Curtains? I guess I'll just take a Concealing Curtains. Gutmorn does have Death Touch, so it's a pretty effective blocker.
presumably have some sort of instant to cast here. Maybe this was a bad way to block. Yeah, it was a bad way to block. So let my curtains die. Thankfully I have the treasures from their unexpected windfall to be able to cast. Yet another gut mourn from my hand. I'll just block the token for now. Let's see if they want to crack open the witch. They're going to wind up with cards in their hand. It'd be nice to be able to make them discard and steal something with Gutmorn. Ooh, Shatter Skull Smashing. That's kind of scary. And a second den of the bugbear. It's also pretty scary. So if I go... Like this... Can level this up, and now my gut morn is hitting for two a turn. Probably should have just attacked with the faceless haven, it would have done six damage. So like almost a forced play for them to shatter skull smashing my two guys. I get to see what I'm going to get from the witch though. I'm looking forward to that. Come on, something good. Ooh, the blood hunter bat. I'll take that one. Don't mind if I do. It's going to give me two life and they're going to lose four life. And it's effectively a pretty powerful flyer, given the Warlock class. It's on level 3. Okay, they're chumping, but I'm still going to get the ping from the Warlock class. It's going to get doubled. So they're practically dead. All right, nice. Uh, against this deck, so like a spell-based red deck. I don't know that I really need to sideboard much at all. Did they play any creatures? Oh, they light up the night. I guess they have Tybalt. So maybe... Sap Vitality is just better than Infernal Grasp. Maybe Duress is better than Dreadfugue, although... I think Dreadfugue hits a lot of the same stuff, right? Two or less. I guess Duress hits the Unexpected Windfalls. The non-cleaved version of Dreadfuge hits the Geist Blasters. I think I'll split the difference on those. That way, if I draw one of each, I'll have I'll be able to make a decision about the best way to sequence them. Sometimes when you, you split cards two and two, it's not because... You can't make up your mind which it's best. It's because you want 
to be ready for the, the situation where you draw one of each. Now that I know more about their deck, I think I'm actually going to keep this hand. Their deck isn't going to build just a giant board before I can do anything. It's also kind of nice that the Curse Bomb Witch, there is a 20% chance I can get a Witch's Cottage out of it if it dies. Not drawing a land that turn. It's pretty sad. I feel like I'm going to get crushed by Conductive Current. That's not bad. I definitely want to trade one for one as much as possible. Given that I'm Landlight. Because it just buys time for me to draw the lands I need. All right, they've got their Tibble online. So this, they found a Hell Rider. That is a pretty good card. Are they gonna attack? No. I guess I'll just kill this. I'm going to give them a Deadly Dispute for whatever their worst spell is in hand. But I'm getting a 4-3 Gutmorn out of the deal, so that's pretty nice. Another Hellrider. It's one of the better cards you can wind up with. And they brittily blasted my gut more. Oh, and the fact that they play Brittle Blast means that I don't get the cards from the spellbook anymore. That's pretty annoying. I think I may be a little bit too far behind now. Oh man, the middle ability on this card is so strange. It's like they could they're trying to do three damage, but if I don't want to do three damage. Like they're trying to do three damage to the target, but if I don't want them to do the damage to the target, I can redirect it to myself. But if that happens, then they get to rummage a card. It's just a really, really weird card. They got devil's play. 
They've gotten really good cards from the spellbook every time. Maybe the spellbook is better than I thought it was. There are some definite stinkers in here. Wait, you can just get a devil token? Oh no, it's showing me the devil token because the devil token is made by the minus X. You can't get a devil token. It's just a card to get. Should I give them another deadly dispute? I don't want to give them another shattered skull smashing, that's for sure. I'm going to start by attacking with my 2-3 lifelinker on their Tybalt. I'll give them a Deadly Dispute. They should probably give me back a Deadly Dispute, I would think. And then I would assume I'm taking a Deadly Dispute here, but maybe there's a better option. I'll take a Shattered Skull Smashing. I would assume the Gutmorn is getting devil plate, Devil's Plate here, but maybe not. No blocks. What do you got for me? They found another Devil's Play. Wow. That's really bad for me. I won't stop fighting until people are safer. I'm going to split the difference and attack one on each. Does that make sense? No. I'm going to attack two on the Tybalt. I need to Deadly Dispute. I need to do more than just play Shatter Skull Smashing this turn. But, alas, that's all I get to do. This does not seem to be a game I'm going to win. The Brittle Blast was surprisingly effective this game. Wow. That's that's a lot of damage. I can't win. You can just fireball me into death. It's been a long time since I played against Hellrider. Any reason to change my deck? I don't think so. Definitely Sap Vitality was a card I was hoping to draw pretty much every turn of that game. All right, another one land hand. Ugh. It's a better hand. Do I want to take the Reckless Impulse or do I want to take the Chandra? I 
guess I'll take the Chandra. I hope they play that one of those frenzied prowess guys. Go blank is usually pretty effective against my opponent's style of deck. I think that's one of the strengths of this deck is just playing four go blanks in your main deck and having them be relevant. So I do want to give them a set vitality. I guess I could also give them the curse bound witch. The witch is pretty stinky if they're going to wind up Riddle blasting the gut morn. I think I'll just give him the witch. If they wanted to, they could have brittle blasted with the trigger on the stack to prevent the switcheroo. They didn't do that though. This is a really good card, the Town Razor Tyrant. It's one of the best cards in the new set, I would say. All right, 4 2 Curse Bound Witch. I like it. So, what this does is it turns off a man land and then. It also, it's going to deal two to a turn to me if I don't sack the land. Let's see if I can get them to block with the curse bound witch, and then I'll. I guess they know about the brittle blast, so they probably shouldn't block, but they've chosen to. So I've denied them access to the spellbook of the curse bound witch. It's pretty nice. So remember, I can't turn this into a creature. I'm going to keep it around for a turn or two. Just because I'd like to be able to cast Soren if I draw it. Hmm. I want to make this into a creature. I don't necessarily want them to get to loot away a mediocre card. Okay, they didn't have a card. Should I attack for seven or should I leave this back to potentially block? I think I should just attack for seven. I wonder if they're planning on blocking with the Den of the Bugbear. Now I'm going to sack the land next turn. Although this is a race I am not winning. Soren would be a really good draw. Soren's 
Swamp is not a good draw at all. I don't think there's anything I can get through from the spell book that saves me here. Also, they riddle blasted, so I don't even get anything anyway. Alright. That was a fun game, at least. It used a lot of new cards. Seems like a pretty strong card, or pretty strong hand. I'll start out with Dreadfugue, just because. I've got two of them and I don't want it to miss. I guess I'm taking their creatures here. I'm not gonna be able to take this Tauroth's Disciple, which is one of the new cards. It's three, three haste that puts three lightning bolts in your deck when it gets to attack. I don't think that's a particularly good card. I'll just take the flame channeler next. Now oh, they have multiple flame channelers. Now I'll just take one of them. So this is another kind of red spells style deck. It's a little bit unfortunate to get paired up against multiple red decks that are pretty good at just dumping their hand. Certainly my deck kind of prefers to play against people that cannot get cards out of their hand so easily. They're flipping their flame channeler. Okay. I'll make them discard another card. So whatever they have is better than a 3-3 three, three creature. That's probably not the card that is better than a 3-3 three, three creature. Let's see what their better card is. It's curtains for you, opponent. The concealing curtains. They're discarding their card to the concealing curtains. So I'm not forced to take a card here. So I will not choose not to. I don't think I have a good attack there. Next turn I'll be able to grasp this and then I have good attacks. This would be a really bad spot to just play Gutmore, and I'd wound up having to just give them a card. So they probably have nothing in their hand. Or at be like best case would be they have an instant in their hand that they would just cast. Gutmorn's probably going to be pretty good. Unless I draw... Like, if I draw Soren, it's going to be really awkward. But if I draw a land or a low-impact card and I can just Gutmorn to get a spell out of their hand, potentially, it's a pretty big deal. Hmm... Didn't even have to decide what to do. So this was, their deck had a lot more cheap creatures in it than the previous opponent. And they had some of the 4-4 dragons. Makes me feel like I do want some of the grasps. I think I might want some meat hook massacres. 
I'm going to try something like that. Going to make a great Cursebound Witch. I've been really impressed by this card so far. Works out great for me. They don't get the trigger from the flame channeler. So I'll be able to just meet hook massacre their board. Then I'll put the torment of scarabs on them and just slowly bleed them out probably. Oh, that's a good card at least. They didn't even want to wait for the Torment of Scarabs. They were done. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the deck. And subscribe to see more videos like this, please.